Hello, everybody. I'm going to do a video here with Mr. Sumo uh, about trimming the underline. And hopefully, I'll be able to get the angle right so you can see it and I can still scissor it. <laughs> I'm learning some, definitely learning some new angles to do some trimming. So, the underline. To look at the underline, Stand the dog up on the table, pretty square, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, like you're stacking for show, but, but pretty four square. Head needs to be up, and you wanna see a little bit of a slope. Not a whole lot, a little bit. And so basically, how do you get that? Well, the glib answer is you remove the hair that's not part of that but the more reasonable answer is take a look at it with a comb, get a long comb and lay it at the angle you want. Um, this is a good time if you have a mirror like I do on the other side, or honestly, having the video camera on this side is a good way for me to look at what I'm, what I'm seeing as if it's from a distance. So, new pro tip I just learned for myself. Hey Sumo, can you stand up please? Okay. Now, I like to have the underline kind of match the, the top line in its angles. So, you know, if you have a, an angle that's really tight like this, it'll make the dog look deep chested, but it'll also make the dog look like he's, his rear, that he's too tucked up, look, looks a little too much like a whippet, you know? So you want to have a nice strong loin the shorter the line is, the stronger it'll be, and you'll have less of this problem. Um, but you want a little bit, you know, less extreme angle. Depending on what your dog's strengths are or your dog's um, lack of strength is, you might want to just barely take anything off if you want to give your dog the appearance of more, more body not as much leg, you know, sometimes we see them, they look really tall underneath here, disproportionate to the proportions of the square that the, their outline, their silhouette is. Anyway, he's starting to get impatient, so let me go ahead and start trimming. There's, there's one area on his underline that's a little bit of a problem. It's back here, the hair is very sparse, and it, if I were to lay the comb along the line of the hair that already exists, there's a hole there. Can you see? Right back by the back leg. There's a hole you can see through uh, the, the comb to the hair. Right there. So, we have to be careful when we trim this underline because that hole is there. If we're not really careful, especially in this part, whatever we trim here, is gonna be higher up in appearance because that hair is sparse or missing, and that's gonna give that tucked up, uh, shelly kind of whippity look that is not a schnauzer. So, you also need to have the dog face forward while you're trimming the underline because when they turn toward you or turn away from you, it changes the angle of this hair. So you really need them to be facing forward. So here comes the awkwardness. Hopefully I can trim and hold and not be in the way. All right, so I'm just gonna start with just a little bit off the bottom. Kind of look at that in the mirror. Look at that in the video. Yeah, that, that comes up. It's very, there's plenty of hair here and it's very sparse here. So. I just got to be super conservative. In fact, I'm going to be so conservative that I'm going to get my thinning shears so that I don't have to make a committed hard line. I use the thinning shears if I'm not sure exactly where I want to put my line because there's a little bit of fudge factor there. I can change it if I want to. You can see, looking here, there's like a not straight part right kind of right here 
that below there is what I'm trying to get rid of. So you have a nice super straight underneath, super hard line here. The harder, the cleaner this line is right here, the better the whole presentation looks. One of my first mentors took me to watch the miniature schnauzer ring. Dory, she was my grooming mentor. And uh, it was a, a specialty, a supported entry or something. And so there were a lot of dogs. And she, she said, can you pick the, the winners of each class? And I'm like, oh, how am I going to do that? I hadn't been doing this very long. And she picked a few of them. And it turned out she picked the winner in every class but one of the ones that she picked. And I'm like, how did you do that? She said, I picked the one that had the straightest, the straightest grooming underneath and the best angle because that's the one that, that looks like, you know, the, the people put the most effort into. And then the next, I never stopped being able to see that. So now when I see minis or I see standards or even giants in the ring, you know, when the underline is kind of ragged, kind of, it's not neat, it does show. And, it, and it, it's just that little touch that can make a big difference. Just even the little bit of hair I've already removed. I don't know if you guys can really tell. But just that little bit of hair that came off right here, I barely took anything off here. He's still got nice solid body from here. It doesn't tuck up here. Still got nice solid body there. Nice and square. Yeah, so that's a pretty good rough draft. You know, as time goes on, I might tweak it to bring it up a little bit more here if I think it makes him look a little too overdone, if it's too long here. Um, I'll definitely be careful when I'm brushing this area because it's like this little curtain of hard hair. That's the one like bane of a really good hard coat is this part of the skirt is, um, is tough to maintain. It's almost like each hair is worth its weight in gold, you know. So that's a good place to remember to um, dampen it before you brush it. Um, don't, don't brush this part while it's dry. You'll, you'll pull hair that you don't mean to and it'll be real hard to get out of this, this sparseness, the whole in this most important part of the of the grooming of the underline. Then you just match it up on the other side, so the side I'm on. Now I'm going to take a look. It's pretty straight on this side. I see a little bit right here that wasn't even. I've got the same issue with the sparseness in that in this spot on the other side. So I'm just going to have to really be careful of that. Okay, the last thing I do when I'm working on my underline is I look from the front, between the front legs. And a lot of times, you know, you've cut this line nicely here, but the hair between the front legs is often really long. And so I might just want to take some of that a little shorter. Don't take it past the, the front legs, though, because that might change your line that you so carefully put in. But um, if the hair right here in the under chest is too long, it makes the dog look short in leg as uh, if, if the judge is looking from the front. Um, you want them to look like it's the same length. In fact, I'm not just look like, you want them to be the same length from here to here and from here to here. This half the square should be shoulder, you know, top line down to elbow, and then elbow down to the, to the ground. So, if you let this hair in the front grow too long, it makes them look like they're really too deep in body and too short in leg. So, again, if you're not sure what to take off, you can take it off with the thinners, and then look at it, and you haven't made as much of a commitment until you're happy with it. I'm not going to address the fore chest particularly right now because um, I'm lightly stripping it and I've already stripped some of it for today. As I get closer to uh, showing, 
then I'll do a little bit more fine tuning of the front here. But just really quick, one thing I will say about it is you have a line that's at a certain angle here, right, the underline, and the four chest hair has a certain angle also. Now what that does is for the eye, the eye likes to see 90 degree angles. So to some extent, if you have a wildly different, like really long hair in the front, then it can change the angle and look funny and actually kind of make the dog look long. There's, you know, there's good reasons for leaving hair here. If the dog doesn't have much of a pro sternum, you know, you want to give them some appearance of that. Um, if the dog's got a nice pro sternum and a hard coat, then you can do what I'm doing here, which is stripping it down and then the hard coat really conforms to the sternum so you can see it, the, breadth, the width of the chest, and then maybe you have a little bit under here. And then, like I said, if you can try to match that. Thank you, buddy so that you have about a 90 degree angle here to here. So that means I've got a pretty big hole right here, but I got a, in terms of where the angle looks like it want to be, wants to be. But I just had to trim this because otherwise, you know, his legs look too short. So that kind of tells me that this is as, as long as the hair here can be. So where do I have to put this line where do I have to put this line to go along with the underline that looks good for him? And I'll just keep working on looking at that as I, as I pull some of this down and get it tighter to the sternum and know more what I've got a little closer to, uh, to showing. So, that's a little tutorial on the underline. And, you know, good way to put it, help Help you train your eye for you know what you want the dog to look like. The more I'm looking at it, it might be the video, so I have to look at it moving around. But it looks like this still might be a little too long, so it's making it look a little too deep in the chest, a little disproportionate from the from the image I have in my head of what I want a correct standard schnauzer to look like. All right, I hope that's helpful.